Welcome and welcome back to the MN Stash, the only channel on YouTube where being blocked by Dan Slott is a sign of a true Spider-Man fan. Today we're going over the new issue of The Amazing Spider-Man, we're up to issue 30 somehow. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. And it is a long awaited uh, conclusion of the Doc Ock storyline which has just been pretty boring so far. If you saw last episode, the story was really boring, I don't even know how to really depict it. And just in case you haven't been caught up on the recent issues, let me just quickly go over the recap, I'm sorry I have to be the person to tell you. Doc Ock has kidnapped Norman Osborn, and with no leads on how to find his boss, Spider-Man has done the unthinkable and connected with Doc Ock's old arms via spinal interface. Meanwhile, Doc Ock revealed that his motivations for kidnapping Norman stem from Norman's time as the Green Goblin. Faulting Osborn for ending his time as the superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock has now decided to just kill Norman. The story in this book takes place right after the previous issue, as you'd expect, where Doc Ock injected him with the Goblin Serum. We get some more hideous panels of Doc Ock and Norman Osborn. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Then right after that we find out that the serum has no effect on Norman. After Norman insults Dr. Octopus, he goes into a fit of rage and is about to kill him. We switch scenes to see Spidey about to take off to go on the search to find Norman Osborn. However, there's something just a tiny bit different about our web slinger here. His speech is a bit more aggressive from time to time, and it's obviously just because he's connected the tentacles to his system, which is slowly changing his personality, with the first sign being, You dare question me, you dolt? That's what he said to Jameson. Now, you're going to hear Dalt a few more times in the story because Zeb Wells, he thinks he's hilarious. Then we see Norman Osborn about to die at the hands of Dr. Octopus until Spider-Man bursts through the door. Then all of a sudden, Spider-Man says something a bit different. Maybe they recognize the voice of true authority and Doc Ock is like, Why do you sound like that? Like me. You didn't. <gasps> you did. You spine locked with my arms! I'm really trying to make this sound more exciting than it is. Reading this book is like the most boring thing you could do. The dialogue, it's like a child wrote this. Anyway, so Spider-Man and Doc Ock then have a little bit of a battle with some amazing dialogue with Spider-Man saying, we will see who is truly superior. Get it? Then, this is the best part. Doc Ock says, you cannot out octopus me, dolt. And then Spider-Man goes, we shall see, Dalt. Who are you calling Dalt? You Dalt? Fucking kill me. You, you know what? Just screw it. I can't be bothered going through this story anymore. Basically, Doc Ock and Spider-Man continue to fight. Spider-Man almost loses. Norman Osborn tries to help Spider-Man. Then all of a sudden, Spider-Man's about to kill Doc Ock due to the fact that the tentacles still being connected to his spinal cord until he realizes what he's doing and then eventually gets the tentacles off his body. But during all this, the new Octoids have taken Dr. Octopus for an escape. And then they say they're going to split up, however it just cuts scenes to Spider-Man and Norman just talking on a rooftop. And I gotta say that this part, it's very sentimental. I'm kidding, this is shit. Basically, it's Norman just expressing the deep sadness he feels for the death of Kamala. And how she used to get him a coffee uh, every morning or some shit, I don't know, who gives a shit? She was barely in the book for God's sake. Sometime. But anyway, that is where the story ends, and now it's time for my thoughts. So buckle up, let's get ready for this one. To put it simply, this was horrible. The dialogue was absolutely horrendous. I mean, who are you calling Dolt, you Dolt? That shit reads like a bad parody. And on top of that, Wells once again writes Peter being unable to defeat a villain that he's handily beaten dozens of times over so he can be saved by Norman Osborn for the millionth time. <laughs> Who's that? Son. I really don't understand why they just didn't give Zeb Wells the writing position on the Gold Goblin miniseries, since he's clearly more interested in writing for Norman instead of Spider-Man. And it also continues to appear that Zeb Wells is under the impression that Peter is an angry, immature man-child that can't stay in control of his emotions, which is one of the dumbest takes on the character that has ever been conceived. I know that the tentacles were interfering with his brain, but this is far from the first time that Peter has acted like a jackass in this run. You know, for someone to watch their girlfriend getting swallowed into a fucking limbo, you're taking this pretty well. And of course, Marvel decided on keeping Zeb Wells for another year because he's done such a phenomenal job so far. Jesus, kill me now. I mean, I love how the ending to this issue is a memorial of sorts for Kamala Khan, who barely appeared on a panel with either character when alive, with the only memorable interaction between her and Norman being her almost getting fired. It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. 
No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Which was also in the same week that an issue comes out featuring her resurrection and announcing her new series. I mean, is there any sort of synergy between Marvel editors? Because it feels like they only really care about the MCU synergy. Which has also caused a lot of damage to the Spider-Man community, but that's a topic for another day. Also, why is it implied that the superior Spider-Man arc gave Spider-Man the muscle memory of using Otto's original arms? Because the set Otto used as Spider-Man were entirely different and virtually identical to the one Peter himself used in the Iron Spider suit during Civil War. And also, does Norman have powers without his suit or not? Because shouldn't he have been able to knock Otto out with a sucker punch or at least do more damage than you'd expect Jameson? Especially after being dosed by... enough goblin serum to turn an elephant? You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just shot them! I could have shot everyone! Why are you doing this right now? One bullet at a time, that's all it takes! I could have killed every single fucking person! I could have killed you! Jesus, who wrote this? It's getting to the point where it doesn't even feel like Zeb Wells is even putting in an ounce of effort into anything he's done on this run. And, and the fact that he's got another, what, 40 issues lined up after this? It's just really disheartening as a Spider-Man fan. How did the worst writers get the best treatment from these companies? I mean, the books are not even selling. I'm seeing issues that are a couple months old, still new on the rack. A and Marvel's acting like everything is fine. I really do pray for the day where we get a new writer, like someone like J. Michael Straczynski coming back to the book. That would be my dream. Just so he could fix everything like he did when he first came into the, to the Spider-Man stuff. But I really doubt that that would ever happen, especially with how things are going. But anyway, this is where I want you guys to come in. What do you guys think of this video and of this issue of Spider-Man? I'd love to start a conversation and see what you guys think. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe because here any support means so much and see you in the next one.